Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you for clicking on this video. I have had an overwhelming outcry for help, and that's why I'm gonna make this video series. We're gonna cover carriers, cruisers, battleships, and destroyers. I'm gonna teach you in one video how to immediately play that ship or that class significantly better than you have been before. People have seen me play this in the past. You just recently saw an entire video where I played this. We're gonna start with carriers. I know everyone says they hate carriers, but guys, carriers are not going away. So we may as well do everything we can to educate the people on how to play this correctly. I certainly don't consider myself an incredible super unicum carrier player, but I know how to play it. I'm pretty decent with it, and I get the job done. Some people might disagree with some of my points that I'm going to bring up here. That's fine. You can have your opinion. But... The simple fact is a carrier is one of the strongest ships in the game because it's the only ship in the game, the only class, that doesn't risk any hit points to get damage. It is of my opinion that the best two carriers at the high tiers, we're not going to cover the low tiers, Parsival and Pobeda, they're both different in their own way and they're both uniquely good at certain things. It's very simple. Oh my god, I didn't even look. I don't have camo on that. No, you did yeah. not. <laughs> Hello, my name's Bravo and I'm a liability. Most of you out there are solo players, so I'm gonna take this video towards the solo player approach, but it still completely applies when you're in divisions. As good as Pobeda can be, I still think Parsifal is without a doubt the king of the carriers at tier 7. People are gonna disagree with me, I don't really care. I spec my Parsifal with Starscream on here. I get a 1.5% increase to my overall speed. As you can see, I don't have a very high level star scream. I've been thinking about bumping him up. In the first line, we spec into no fly zone. In the second line, we inspect it into inspired return, aircraft speed, HP, more HP. Third line, hidden threat. Fourth line, emergency power, legendary perk. We set to corkscrew for AP bomb penetration multiplier. Now, Inspirations, you can run a bunch of different things. I spec into torpedoes. That's my bread and butter, is torpedoes. I'm pretty good with them. So we spec for torpedo damage, as you can see, another 3.5%. It's not that much, but it does make differences. And then we spec for this girl here. Uh, no time to explain aircraft restoration. So you just maybe get another plane or two in the battle. The mods I have installed on Parsifal, Flight Control Mod 1, Air Groups Mod 2, Concealment, Air Groups Mod 3. You'll notice I spec everything into survivability with these airplanes as well. Now, when it comes to playing carriers, I don't care if you're in divisions, I don't care if you're solo. The reason I think Parsifal's King is its ability to target destroyers. So there's gonna be a list of rules that we are gonna live by when we play this solo carrier game. And we're gonna see how we do. In the match, rule number one, find, seek, destroy, harass. Keep that destroyer occupied. So that's what we're gonna do starting out. It's a kangaroo. Ooh, that shouldn't be too difficult. And there's only one of them. So the next thing you need to do is you need to recognize AA values, right? You need to know who is gonna shred your planes faster than others. The third thing you need to recognize is who can you citadel, who can you not citadel? So looking at this, we can citadel mains. I'm pretty sure we can citadel Magi. Possibly even Lion. I know I can't Citadel Mass or Yamato, maybe once in a blue moon, but not really. GK, we can definitely Citadel GK. So we're gonna use mostly the bombs on just those. So that's good to keep in mind. So step one, okay, here's the enemy carrier airplanes, right? We're gonna fly out to where our destroyer is going to be, where he's going to go. We're gonna drop uh, fighters right here, okay? So we only have one. One little kangaroo down there. We got to keep that kangaroo safe at all costs. Kangaroo's got his AA on. He's going to be detected. Is he being dropped? He popped smoke. I don't think he's dropping kangaroo. He's dropping somebody else. So we're just searching right now. That's the first thing you got to do when you get into these games. Staying outside of AA bubbles. Okay, six kilometers. AA bubble. Stay outside of it. There's a smoke. And we're going to watch that smoke and see exactly what happens here. Is that a DD smoke? I'm leaning towards it is because if that was a Mino... That Mino would be shredding us with AA. Looky there. Okay. He's turned. That's fine. Oh, he didn't turn enough. Is he going to take one of those? 
Brother. Yikes. So again, we're going to keep this guy safe. If we keep this guy safe as a solo player playing a solo game, if we keep that guy safe, which we know he doesn't have a smoke screen, so now he's got no current protection. That's very important. You have to realize these things. Our kangaroo does not have smoke anymore. So if we drop fighters over the kangaroo, it's less likely that the enemy carrier is going to fly over him and try and do anything at all. We're going to try our best to keep our destroyer alive and healthy, and he just got into an engagement with the kangaroo. Okay, this, guy's, this guy needs advance help. He needs advance help. I'm on the way. Because their kangaroo pushed through. He's well within spot. This is one thing that he shouldn't have blown his smoke wad because right now he could he could go dark and he could save all this HP. In fact, he never would have been shot. And now he's getting shot below half health. This is something we're going to cover in the DD video. But this is pretty crucial stuff, pretty crucial information. And if he shot his guns, he's going to remain spotted for a while. I'm not sure why I can't see him. I think that's a bug or something that they, they need to fix in the game. I can't see this enemy destroyer, but he's clearly spotted. Okay, we're gonna pop this. We're gonna pop that. Okay, we're gonna try and protect our HP. Oh, we flew through a flat cloud. That sucks. It happens sometimes. We got a little bit unlucky. Dropped a little bit long. That's fine. Keeping that guy straight. Fly away. He's gonna dodge. Kinda figured he would. Yikes, brother. Watch his turn, watch his speed, watch what he's doing. Drop it there. I saw two track left, probably gonna miss. Yeah, they're gonna make a hole for him. Unless he overturns, which he seems to be doing. Yeah. As you can see, we're five minutes into this game and I've got 6,000 damage. Five whole minutes into this game. All I've done is go after that enemy destroyer because I know how crucial it is. If I can keep our destroyer alive, what that's going to do for our team. I have bombs here because I need to let my torpedoes regen a little bit, but I'm still going to try and overfly this kangaroo just in case he's chasing our guy. Don't think he is, but just in case. And we didn't spot anything in his last known, which honestly kind of surprises me a little bit. We're going to burn that because I want to just protect overall HP integrity. We're going to drop Kerr first a little bit. I dropped those too far. Yeah, I messed that drop up. Okay, there he is. Going to get one more drop on this. I look better. Hey, we'll take it. Another very important rule is read the map. Okay, so we've got a Yamato, we've got our kangaroo that's low health, and there's a whole bunch of people pushing. So we need to just get out of here. It's plain and simple. We need to get the carrier in auto drive and start heading the other direction. This Yamato seems to be holding pretty well. We're gonna see if we can't help this out here because this Massachusetts is getting will to rebuild from the Yamato. We're gonna see if we can't help. Flood on mass, too. I don't want to do it, but I think I'm going to dodge the kangaroo here. I can kill that kangaroo at any time when he leaves his AA bubble. If I can stick that mass with another couple torps. Okay. It's just little things like that that are crucial. Now, I've only got four torps here. That's going to be more than enough. So I'm going to go after the kangaroo right now. Something interesting happened. This, this kangaroo is not listening to me. Uh, but what happened is this guy's popped smoke. Okay, I've spotted the torps. I've spotted the torps. I'm doing my job. This guy is asking for support. And he has been playing it pretty well. He's still alive and he's still pretty healthy fighting all those ships. I'm doing what I can here. Overflying these. I'm spotting them up for him. I'm doing what I can. I can't drop this guy. I've got one... One rack, one drop, pretty much. Is he going to eat a torp? So because I spotted those torps, that Yamato didn't take a torpedo, possibly didn't take a permaflood. 
That is major. That is major for us in the game. I don't really like my drop there. I'm just hoping he overturns. He did not. He should make that. It's kind of an impulse drop. But sometimes you can get away with it. Can I get really lucky? Can I get really lucky? Am I just the goat of the goats of the carrier players? So this game's over, guys. It's over. But as a carrier, you did your job. Your job is not to go get damage. Your job is to spot, protect, and destroy enemy destroyers. I do not care what anyone else's opinion on that is. That is your job. That is your only job. Spot and seek the enemy destroyer and then protect your destroyers. It's that simple. Now, we are at the bottom of the leaderboard. But you know what? The, that DD and that Yamato that got first place, they're both going, man, that carrier just saved us. That carrier was a good carrier player. Guaranteed. So end result, seven tour pits. We only had one, one bomb run. Only one bomb run. We're not out here chasing damage in carriers. It's not, that's not how this works. So 32K, seven tour pits, two bomb hits. Mission accomplished. We've done our job. We won the game. If I didn't want to win the game, I could have went out there and got 120, 150K. Probably could have come near the top of my team. So I hope that clears things up. I know there's a lot of guys that are not very good in carriers and they always tell me, hey, I don't know how you're so good in a carrier, but it's those simple rules, right? And if you just follow those simple rules I laid out for you, you'll do fine. To all the carrier players out there, do your job. Go after the enemy destroyers. Spot the enemy destroyers. Kill the enemy destroyers. Before you go damage chasing, you need to have the destroyers wiped off the map. If it takes you all game and you still don't get that destroyer, that's all you do. You dog that destroyer until the cows come home. That will inadvertently help your team win significantly more games. Trust me, I know a thing or two about winning more games. I can't believe the Iowa is still my most played. I've played it like 10 times in the last 12 months. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for clicking on it. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. Let me know in your comment section down below if you think this is actually going to help you improve your carrier play. Next on the list, we're doing cruisers, baby. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!